Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. How's it going, everybody? Thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate you guys coming in here. Everyone seems to be just popping in, just clean up over 20. Everyone, I am Peter, and this is my colleague, Phil, and we got our wonderful moderator, Nuria, in the chat, taking care of everyone's messages. Really appreciate everyone coming in and, and taking the time to get started and, and get to know a little bit more about serial numbers with us. We're, we're taking it very seriously today. It's the name of the presentation. It's, it's very important for us to, to all get our smiles settled and, and really buckle down here. Exactly. No, uh, no joking around here or having fun. Just absolutely uh, not. Totally serious. I we, believe we, we are also. A... Oh, Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, we. I was going to say we have a super serious giveaway towards the end of our presentation. So, going to keep a little bit in the pocket there. I think we may have teased it in our our welcome email, but it's it's extremely serious and and very important. And actually, it'll go an extra mile. You know, the next day or two. So, it's a really good stuff to to get you going. Exactly, yeah. And uh, hopefully everyone's excited for that. Hello to everyone. I see a couple of people saying hi in the chat. We always welcome uh, everyone. Come on, say hi. If you want to let us know where you're from or uh, how long you've been using Inflow or if you're not even using Inflow or uh, what industry you're in, we love to see all the different uh, representations of people all over. And, and we know we have customers in kind of all different uh, sorts of businesses. So um it's definitely nice to to see everyone come in here hey we have someone from winnipeg good morning good morning from dallas good morning from florida we are based out of toronto born and raised always happy to see our comrades up from the north you know oh, from yeah. california hi jack good morning new jersey sue st marie Ooh, yes Saint marie, go marie, on go. <laughs> yes and we Ooh, have a hospital in the Glasgow international I won't suffer anyone through my Scottish accent, though it is phenomenal. So if Romania, if you'd like to reach out afterwards to our support team, I'd be happy to jump on a call and demonstrate exactly how I can deeply offend you. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, none of my accents are good enough to not offend somebody. So uh, uh, I see Jack from Hong Kong. Cool. Oh, and uh, another and Jack, Jack from, from Montreal. Montreal. Hey, almost all my family lives up in Montreal, so so... I very high. fortunately, Phil yeah. won't be kicked from the meeting for being a Montreal Canadiens fan, though just know I am thinking about doing it throughout this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a lot of slack for that being in Toronto with uh, loving the Habs, but hey. We got a lot of friends. slack for loving the Leafs in Toronto, so it's kind of even that way. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, there we go. That's, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that way. We got to see a few I other think ones. That's good to Houston. to get going. Is that right, Phil? Are we live on Facebook? Are we across the board here. We are. I double checked. We are live on Facebook. So hello, anyone in Facebook. Um, we uh, I guess just quickly. Uh, again, we do have the chat going here. Love seeing everybody typing in here. We will do kind of like a Q and A at the end. If you do have questions while we're going, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, either Nuria may answer in the chat. I will probably try and read out as many as I can as well, so we can kind of. Uh, get them in there, but we will also have a dedicated Q&A at the very end, too. So, Absolutely. Uh, so definitely let us know. And please don't be a stranger at all. If we can't have time to get to your questions or you need a bit more of a deeper answer, you can always reach us at support at inflowinventory.com. Happy to go over anything, answer anything, and, and we'll always, you know, very serious serial questions. Very serious. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I guess to start us off today, Let's go a little bit over what we're going to talk about, a little bit about serial numbers. So a little bit about what is an actual serial number. How is it different than other barcodes? And how does that actually play into how you would use inflow and inventory tracking day to day? Why you should track serial numbers? Some of this is obviously going to be relevant to you guys. You're here to learn how to track serial numbers. You obviously know why you need to, but good things to keep in mind as you're doing it. And then I'm going to go through the various different apps of Inflow, for the mobile app for some scanning, for the web app to create our products, and a bit about our manufacturing side and our tracking side as well. So we're going to show you all the different ways that you guys can work with serials and Inflow and how easy it is. And then at the end, we, again, we have our super serious, super special giveaway to everybody. So make sure to stick around for that because it's going to be great. And I won't leave Andrew off the list, even though he has said Habs forever. So Phil, you know. You're lucky. <laughs> hey, we got at least at least one fan. That's great. And I'm just going to quickly put it out there. We just published a, a poll in the chat, too. Are you new to Inflow or not? Just a quick thing that you can pop in there uh, while Peter takes us off. Yeah. So, so what is a serial number and how is it different? 
So a serial number is a unique string of letters and numbers that's used to identify a single unit of a product. Now, you may be familiar with this with things like iPhones, with things like laptops, cars, anything like that. And, and really the, the important point of this is that a serial number identifies a single unit, a single entity of an item, whereas a barcode is the same set of numbers and letters for any unit of that product. The example I always like to think of is cell phones and teddy bears. Each one of your cell phones, each one of your cell phones is always going to have a unique number so they can track down exactly what went wrong with the software or anything like that. And every teddy bear is going to have the same teddy bear code on it unless you're at Build-A-Bear, which is a wonderful place. But besides that, all teddy bears are unique despite that you think yours is special because it is, but it doesn't have a serial number. So your barcodes are all going to be the same. They're going to be completely identical. Everything's going to scan and pull up the same one, but the serial number is going to have a unique code that we're going to be able to track things across warranties, across different repairs. And this really ties into why they're very important and why they're actually really necessary for compliance across a lot of industries. If it's quality control and recalls for things like VIN numbers in cars for brake checks or any sort of insurance requirements to take things back. If it's warranty coverage, if someone purchases an extended warranty, how do you tie that to an individual unit? It's also great for recalls if you're doing manufacturing for batch production. You can track which batch a serial number was made in, find the other serials that are relevant, allows you to keep track and tie all those ends together. And it's also very important in fraud and theft protection in order to sort of verify the uniqueness and the specialness and the perfection of the wonderful products. And that's why you see a serial number on every single dollar bill that comes out of every single mint across the world. Obviously, I know you guys know all this, but they're good things to keep in mind because serial numbers get tricky to track. It's, it's, it's a lot of work to keep on top of these things and it is extremely important. So it's very good to keep that on the top of our heads. Now, as we go through this, I'm going to start going through and demonstrating how we're going to track serials through Inflow using the different apps. Feel free to toss any questions in the chat. Phil will be reading any out that we think we can answer in real time. There'll be a Q&A at the end. And also our wonderful moderator, Nuria, is going to be answering some of your questions there and trying to keep on top of things. So please, please, please ask anything that's relevant and we'll see what we can do to, to help you out. Cool. So from I'm here, I'm also oh, sorry. Just going to quickly toss in there too. Um, I'm going to publish. We we got more than half of you responded with the the previous poll, which was fantastic. Thank you. We got one more for you. Just do your products have serial numbers already? So just uh, another cool thing for us to know. So I'm put, putting that up in there. And uh, yeah, take it away, Peter. I'm excited to see well, hey, this. No wrong answers, just ha whether your products have serial numbers or not, because I'm actually going to show you how you guys can generate serial numbers or take the existing ones off of your products. So hey, no wrong answers, nothing bad here. We'll make sure we show off all the different ways we can do things. So taking us over to our web app here, this is Inflow's main platform where we're actually going to be making our new different products and managing serial numbers day to day. And the best way to start doing that is to actually go into a new product and start creating a new serialized item. Now, you'll see there's a number of different product types. Stock product is the default, the most common. This would be our teddy bear example from earlier, where they're sort of interchangeable in a same sort of situation. But I want to swap to serialized product here because this is going to do this unique serial number on each unit like we were discussing. So I'm going to call my serialized product here cell phone Y to take over from what Danny was uh, made earlier in our wonderful example and our wonderful slides. Once I create this serialized product, you're going to see a whole host of different options of how I can set things up, my quantity over here, adding an image to it, categorizing it across different things. I'm actually going to go and put this one into machines here. I can add in a unique SKU for any integrations and a barcode that's going to identify that it's a cell phone, but not which cell phone it is. There's also the ability to control pricing and cost, but I'd likely recommend that we actually do that via one of our purchase orders so we can actually get some of these cell phones into the system by making a new purchase order from here. So I'm going to choose my first vendor, Alphabet Optics. Obviously, you guys would choose the one that's relevant to you. And to add product to my order, I'm simply going to go in and select the cell phone. And you see this small little box here. This is what is asking Inflow to create or specify the serial numbers that I'm receiving on this order. And I actually can't go in and receive this order. I can't physically move things along without specifying the serial. Now, 
it's important to note, and this is a good distinction here, I can place this order, I can email it to my supplier, I can print it off and send it to whoever I need to without specifying the serial. You're not going to know the number of the iPhone that you're getting when you email you know, Tim Cook to go and get uh, uh, your latest copy of the iPhone 16S that's coming out next month. You're not going to know which one. But when I actually pop over here to receive, if I hit autofill, I need to specify a serial number or Inflow is going to give me a little error saying that I actually can't receive this product. So we're actually putting that check and balance in to make sure that no one can come in and, and tackle that. So in my case, I'm actually just going to go and specify that this serial number is 0001. You can have Inflow generate numbers based on this little sequence here. I can add a prefix, you know, let's call this CPY, cell phone Y and start generating everything in here. Now, when I go and hit save, you're not gonna see that error message. You're gonna see that this order is marked as fulfilled. And now I actually have one of these serial numbers in stock that I can go and check out under my product page here under cell phone Y. And you can see that I've actually just got this in here. Same symbol, same everything. And you can see that number that we just purchased and just received there. Again, if you guys have any questions, if this ties into any of your workflow, feel free to type it in the chat and we'll sort of keep going through this whole thing. Yep. One so of far, So far, we seem to be good. So you're doing great. Thanks. I know everyone knows how to do this. I know this is easy stuff for you guys. But one of the cool things that we've actually added over the past couple of years has been this new printing feature for getting serial numbers actually down through our Dymo integration. And you can actually go through here to print barcode for this item. And I've got myself a regular label and a serial number label. And you can actually see I've got two different barcodes that I can print off for this specific serialized item. I've got my barcode barcode and I've got my serial number barcode. This template's customizable, so you guys can change a little bit of what you would want to see and do. But this is really going to be excuse me, how you guys can actually put all of these on your different goods. You can control which serials you're printing off and actually get, you know, hundreds of labels all done for all of your items and really start slamming serial numbers on them so you guys can scan them out as they go. Now, for actually scanning those serial numbers out, that's what we would do on this sales order function here. And it's going to be quite similar to how we moved everything over on the purchase order side. I'll choose my first wonderful customer, Activision, and all of the information that I have about them auto-populates. I'm simply going to go and choose cell phone Y in this case. And you can already see it's asking me, oh, I'm just going to make sure I'm fulfilling from the right location. It's going to not specify the serial number as I'm creating the order. It's going to not it's not, not going to tell me which one I'm taking out of stock. It's not going to try to assume that. But it does show me a list of my available serial numbers here, so I can actually click and select one and potentially reserve this one for this customer. So Inflow is not going to do that automatically, but you have the option to if there's something specific in mind, particular model, particular number that you would want to do. And then again, this fulfilled button here, that's what's actually taking the item out of stock. That's what's moving it physically from inventory. And I'm actually not going to have that serial number on hand anymore. So this is a really great way of tracking a serial number and tracking a movement from start to finish because we've got the purchase order that it came in on, the vendor, price paid, movement of goods, even the actual inflow user that made that change. And then on the flip side, you've got all that same information for the product coming out of the program. You've got the customer that it went to, the date, the user that did it, the number that it went to for the order number and the serial all tracked together within one program from start to finish. So it's a really useful audit trail in that sense. And from our actual desktop app here, we've got some really cool reports and different ways to track that, that movement of goods. So what I wanna show you guys is up here in the top left, under inventory, under movement history, and this is actually sort of an interactive sheet that you guys can work with in order to track individual movements of goods and actually hunt down individual serials as well. So you can see here on the left, I've got this show serial numbers option. Once I click it, I've now got an extra search field and I'm actually going to go in and search for 0001. And this is showing me all the different serial numbers that come in under that and all the different movements of them. So I've got purchase order receive, 
and sales order fulfillment here. And I can actually easily just double click in this case. And this actually pulls open the order and the entire record of everything that I was looking at. I've got a version history here where you can see that I was the one who just did this a minute ago, but maybe it's six months or nine months and you want to know who did what and, and sort of keep track of your team members in that way. And I've got all of the information for this specific movement here. On top of this, you can actually do some fun stuff in terms of tracking your returns for warranty, for repair, whether it's on the same sales order or something completely different. I can simply go in and hit autofill, and this is going to add the quantity of the items that I'm returning here. And it's going to ask me to, again, specify the serial number. I'm going to choose the same one that's matching on the order. And then I'm going to go in and actually restock this one as well. Autofill inflow will match up the serial number that it's moving for, put it back into the right location. And now I've gone in and hit save. You can see both movements of goods here, both the in and out. And if I come back to my movement history and refresh, you can actually see that that movement is live updated right there in the tracking. So I've got this same serial number from start to finish all the way through across all of my different platforms. And this is actually one of the best ways that inflow can track all these different movements of goods and, and really give you a bird's eye view and an audit trail across all of your serial numbers and any time you move them. Awesome. Um, we do have a couple quick questions that, that we yeah, can let's go, go through. Just uh, the, the first one I did see uh, from Bradford um, had asked, after a work order, can you assign the serial number? So this was back when you were showing how when you receive it. Um, if you if you can do that as well. Oh, absolutely. You're jumping ahead of the game. I had that next on our list. <laughs> so uh, if you want to hold on for that, then we, we can show that in one second, Bradford. Um, we did also have a question, um, uh, I believe also from Bradford as well, asking, can you generate a QR code? Uh, I know Nuria did answer it in here, but um, unfortunately at the moment, we don't have the ability to generate QR codes, um, but we will definitely upvote that as like a, a feature request. We're, we're always uh, looking for feedback and comments and suggestions and things like that. And uh, anything you send to us here on the support team, we actually record, we pass mm. along to the higher ups and they, they kind of use that to try and plan out the, the future of the program and features and things so um, kind of the old saying the squeaky wheel gets the oil so more people that ask for something the more likely it is to happen kind of thing so uh, if you do ever have uh, suggestions or things that you're hoping we could get in the program definitely send uh, send us a comment come into chats anything like that and, and we do record all that I like the squeaky wheel analogy that's that's wonderful <laughs> I haven't actually heard that I thought I had heard all the old British sayings but no I guess there's still one more kicking out there so to tackle um, Brad's question here about the, I'm oh, sorry, Phil, was there one more? Oh yeah, actually, I just saw. Um, I'm sorry if I mispronounced this. Romina um, was saying that they use Mac and they don't have the platform that you're showing currently right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you want to speak on that a little bit, or I can. So this is our our web app versus our actual desktop app. Info started as a desktop platform about 15 odd years ago, and the web app is getting all the features that that the desktop app has right now, just shy of one or two. Unless you're actually doing manufacturing there, it's not gonna make a big difference in terms of functionality, just a bit in terms of interface. So for you specifically, what if you're looking for that audit log, that tracking, we've got these reports here and that same inventory movement, that movement history that I was showing, you can actually get that in an inventory movement details log, open that up here. And you see, I've already got a column specified for this serial number report. I'm gonna generate a quick sample one here. There's a number of different ways of filtering this for looking for specific items, looking for specific categories, as well as to change what's actually showing in terms of still getting that team member information or getting that timestamp on it. And similar to what we can do with the movement history, you can actually save this as the actual data itself. So you don't need to have this uh, just as like a PDF file to share with one of your bosses. You can put it between different platforms or keep it downloaded as sort of an offline to access there. And, and really this is gonna serve the same purpose and, and serve a lot of the same needs as what you're looking for. It's really just that manufacturing section that and that serial number through that manufacturing side. And that for, a, again, for the squeaky wheel, I've been yelling about this for some time, and I would appreciate any more fire to 
yell at the wonderful people that make this stuff so we can get some web uh, work orders done. <laughs> um, so just and, uh, I guess w one other quick thing with that is that um, I, we do know a big focus for our team this year is actually bringing a lot of these features that are in the Windows platform over to mm -hmm. that web platform so that everyone, uh, including Mac users, Linux users, any anybody um, will have access to things like that. So um, hopefully in the coming months, you'll, you'll get even more uh, features on that platform to be able to, to use as well. Absolutely. Fingers crossed, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so just tying into that work order section here, this is what we've actually got in terms of, of my items here. I've got a sunglass sample kit that, that I've got for my own uh, sort of test database with my own serialized items. And for the sake of our example here, I'm actually just gonna quickly uncomplete this order. And I'm gonna go in, right click the top here, and we've got a wonderful webinar also on work orders that dives into a lot more of the specifics of this. But really what I wanna add here is a frame bending machine to my sample kit as a component. And in doing so, this is actually a serialized item in this case. So to pick and go through for this, um, excuse me, this, this work order, I'm gonna have to specify the serial number of what I'm grabbing as a component. So when I go in and pick all these different items here, you can see again, it's the only one that's coming up on an ellipsis and it's auto picked the first serial alphanumerically, but I can easily come in and choose a second serial number or swap between them, whatever is relevant to me. So I can make sure that I'm grabbing the right serial number and specifying the right one that's going out on this. Now, as for the actual put away tab as well, this is gonna be very similar to the purchase order section that I was showing again with the printing of the barcodes. And you can see my little label button up here. So my sunglasses sample kit isn't a serialized good in this example. Ah, it's mad that I don't have my serial number here. Let me go in and grab the proper one. And in this case, if I go in and print the, the, the labels of this, it's going to ask me to go for the regular label. It's not gonna have a serial number, but like I was showing earlier, it's more than possible to print off the serialized goods, create them and generate them in the same way that I was showing before on the purchase order and actually get all of your serial numbers at this stage of your process and keep going. Now, you can also simply set the serial number of your finished good to the serial number of your component, provided you only have maybe one serialized component going into it. Think of manufacturing something that may have a unique you know, motherboard or computer or something that's relevant to keep tracking on top of it. Inflow's only constraint on serial numbers is that you can't have the same one for a product, but you can't duplicate that. But I can have the same one across multiple different products no big deal. I can have 0001 for each one of my different items, just not two of the same item. It's totally unique in that way. So that's a little bit of how you can do it through the work orders in the manufacturing side. And there's going to be some more cool stuff to come on that as we keep building it out. And I'm really excited for it. I also wanted to show everyone a bit of a tour of how we can work through Inflow's mobile app to make sure that you guys have access to all of your serial number tracking and scanning as you go. So this is actually live phone sharing my screen here. And you can see all the different wonderful areas of inflow that I can access from here. And really what I want to go and do is to make a new purchase order so I can actually scan in and get a serial number of something that I'm grabbing. So I'm just going to hit the plus icon up top, similar to how we made a sales order on the web app. I'm going to choose my top vendor here and add one of my products. In my case, I'm gonna choose the frame bending machine, this, this serialized example item that we were working with a second before, and I'm just gonna add one to the order here. Now, similar to how I was doing it before, I can save this PO, I can do everything from my phone without actually having to specify that serial number. And you can see I've got PO 10 that newly got made right up at the top here. And once I go into here, it's actually upon the receiving, it's actually getting this good into stock that you guys will actually need to specify that serial number. So in this case, I could easily scan the barcode of the item, but it's not necessary. I can simply click into there. And now in this case, it's asking me to scan a serial number. Now, this isn't an exact serial, but I've got a barcode on this wonderful Michael Lewis book on my desk that allows me to scan that code there. And all I simply have to go in, save my changes, and now I've actually received that specific barcode, that specific serial on this PO.
So I've got every single thing in here on the PO10, it's fulfilled. And you know, for an added bonus, I could go in and actually email this to someone. I could share it to one of my colleagues, assign it to someone if it's now relevant for them to go pay or push it to QBO or zero to send over to an accounting software. Similar to that first step there, we can also do the same thing on the sales order side. If I pull up this, I'm gonna go in, same thing of what I did on the web app where I'm choosing a different customer here and I'm adding a different product to my order. I'm gonna go in and again, choose the frame bending machine because I wanna make sure I'm scanning the same serial and not getting an error for all of us here live. <laughs> and once I add that to the order, again, no need to specify the serial, don't need to do anything like that. It's on this picking stage, this physical movement stage, that inflow is gonna require it of me. So I could simply click the serial number there, or I can go in and scan a barcode. Now it's specified the right serial numbers there, hit done, that order has been marked picked, it's ready for shipping and I can sort of save it in this partially complete stage where now you see this started order here. So I've got my two stage fulfillment process. And from here, easy enough, just hold the order, mark it as shipped. And if I wanna leave any remarks, if I wanna work with our easy post integration, wonderful webinar hosted actually by Phil, I believe that you guys can go and check out, shameless little plug for him and ship all the items out of the order with any relevant tracking details. So same flow as how we did everything on the web app, same movement of goods both in and out, but everything is doable from your phones and using that scanning function using your phone camera so that you're 100% accurate all the time with your serials. There's no way of getting it wrong because the barcodes, they can't lie. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's one of the definitely the really nice things with the uh, with barcodes and again why most serial numbers are barcoded um, just because again it is a lot easier to scan something you don't have to manually type things and and by accident uh, get something incorrect or wrong or anything that mm -hmm. way. Um, I, I think we've got a couple things here that we could probably quickly yeah, let's um, go on. So. Um, I know Cami was asking, and Nuria has been been doing a great job replying back to people in here. But just uh, again, so that it's on the recording and everything, was asking, does it have the ability to generate barcodes? Oh, um, absolutely. So we can it. do one of a couple of things with barcodes that are really neat. And the thing that I really like the most about Inflow and the way that I think it works really greatly is doing everything via your purchase order, via receiving of things. So if I actually go to PO seven here, this is a great example. So I've got a ton of different items that I'm receiving, a ton of different glasses in this case. And if I actually hit my label button up here to make labels, Inflow is going to auto-populate my Dymo integration, my label template with everything of what I wanted to print. So it's gonna give me 50 of these, 50 of these, 50 of these. It knows what I need based on the PO. So as I'm receiving it, it can send out a whole queue of different items and actually print all of these out. Now. I can exclude this one, swap the label template to my serialized version and do that. And that's actually how we can control and print off all of the barcodes for your items when you guys get everything into stock. In order to do that, you will need the actual, excuse me, the, the simple codes and the barcode field itself. And you'll see through our settings here, Inflow has a way to generate those. So. This pulls us back over to our web app, nice and conveniently. And there's an option here within our inventory settings where you can actually see barcodes over here to generate your barcodes and SKUs. Now, Inflow, you can simply use your vendor ones as well, the things that they give you and scan those to add them to your products. But if you want Inflow to generate barcodes, we can make something that, you know, ABC, Inflow, whatever is relevant for your internal company and simply add a code to each one of your products and add them as you newly gen, uh, create products and add them to your inventory list. So it's a really great way of doing something that works internally, that works within your company. But we also give the option, whether it's importing through a CSV file coming over from another database or just using again, your phone, to scan a code and associate it with a product, we can actually take your existing barcodes as well. And then whatever doesn't have them, we can just fill in the blanks. So totally possible in order to generate these codes. 
And once you have these codes generated, we've got a couple of different ways of then printing them off. We've got our free version where you guys can actually get all of these individual barcodes, print them off via regular printer paper. Lots of people I know have been working with barcode binders at their front office. So you guys can scan them out as they come. You can tape them to shelves and go from there. And we also have an integration with Dymo label printers, which is where you're seeing my label templates come from. A little more customizable, a little more adjustable, and obviously they're, they're dedicated labels. So they're properly sticky and, and attach themselves more conveniently to products. And we do have some exciting news coming in that department soon, but I'm not sure what I'm allowed to tease just yet. So I'll leave it there. Yeah, <laughs> best to be careful. Um, but Cammy did have a follow up question with that one where she was asking if we're also able to register those barcodes, which uh, unfortunately at the moment we're not. Um, so these are only barcodes that would be internal to inflow. Uh, so you would have to then uh, update any other systems that you need that kind of uh, same reference in. Um, we may be, I believe somebody on our team may actually be looking into that kind of thing. But again, that's something that, that may come in the future. We have a lot of moving parts at, at a time. Um, so we're not 100% sure be careful. Yet. We're yeah. not allowed, to, we're not sure what we're allowed to tease just yet, but good, yeah. good things are coming. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so I mean, we will record that again as feedback too, so that they, they again kind of know that this is something that people want, but I uh, just wanted to at least uh, put that out there. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I actually do see Bradford was also asking, uh, I believe actually a, a little bit more, he was saying that uh, training for training others is helpful to do the phone sharing like you're doing. How easy is that to do? I know you were using oh, the it's program. Super I don't easy. know if you want to give them a, a shameless plug there. Um, I it's it's a free version of a software called Let's View. You guys can see the logo here, Let's View there. I simply downloaded the free app on my phone and on my desktop computer and allows you to share your phone through this. Uh, I've actually only added a couple of weeks and it, frankly, I've been loving it so far. So dropping a five star app review for them in the store and and a shameless <laughs> plug. So, I mean, yeah, I get more people on it and, and maybe they'll make some cool new features. Cool. Um, and then, so I saw Brody had a question, is it not possible to use serial numbers to keep track of lot numbers? For example, they buy large numbers of bolts and then have a test report with a lot number that would be for like 12,000 bolts. It's a little tricky to do that unless you're tracking each individual batch of bolts by the batch number. So specifically, each of our serial numbers in Inflow is is tied to one unique item. It can only be ever tied to one item and one quantity of that. So potentially, and this is, I'm not gonna actually rename here, I could call this a bolt batch, 12K, and you guys could use a serial number to track each batch of 12,000 bolts and, and sort of track them at that really high level, pulling out individual ones as needed. But it, unfortunately, it's not possible to use a serial number for each individual one or associate a serial with 12,000. Now, we do have a great webinar on lot numbers and batch number tracking where we use our sublocation field and, and pivot that. And I'd highly recommend checking that out. You'd see it in our webinar channel. It's actually hosted by yours truly. So this is like our fourth shameless plug at this point. And I think we still have one more. So uh, I, I highly recommend checking that out and going over it. And if you have any questions about the workflow, we're obviously happy to help. Again, support at Inflow. We're Canadian. Don't be a stranger. Exactly. Thank you very much. That's a great explanation. Um, I saw Bradford had set, asked if we could scan QR codes, which we uh, we can scan QR codes on the app as well. Hundred um, percent. We we don't have the ability to generate them at the moment, but uh, but yes, you can still definitely scan them. Um, Tony had also asked, how would you be able to do the workflow from in-house inventory? So someone is checking in or out equipment or moving it to another warehouse. So I know Nuria was mentioning that we do have stock transfers available, mm -hmm. which you would still be able to do with your serialized products. It sort of depends a little bit on how you guys would treat the inventory. And this is something I actually talk with a lot of our customers about. We can either use the sales order function for this internal inventory, and there's some really cool stuff that we can do with the showroom where people can actually place orders with you guys. They don't have access to inflow, but they can still see the products and place orders. And really the difference is if we're using our stock transfers and going back to our Let's View plug, we've got that ability 
on the mobile app where you guys can scan out these cereals, move them around. That gives you a live inventory of goods. You'd see different stockpiles of inventory at different locations. You'd move things around and, and you guys can actually see my desktop app here that I've got my current stock screen. Let me just pull it up here where I've got a ton of different locations and you can see the inventory piles at each one. So that's definitely doable and it totally works. But if you don't need the live inventory at each location, if you just need the movement to and from of the serial number, I'd probably recommend using our sales order function, right clicking to customize and rename these fields to whatever's relevant for you. And using the sale and return, you can send products out, keep track of all the goods that have gone to a certain place and keep track of everything coming back. It really depends on if you guys need those live inventory across five or 10 locations, or if you only need a record of the transactions and the record of the movements. So both are totally doable. It's up to you guys, but from, you know, whichever one works, obviously feel free to reach out to us and, you know, we'd be happy to touch base and go into a little more detail. For sure. That's fantastic. Um, let's see. I had a couple other here. Uh, sorry, get a cough. <laughs> sorry about that. At least we're all um, working from home, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Romina had asked, can we create the barcode using the SKU data? You can. You can actually, when you're generating your individual, that'd be under options here, under inventory, when you're generating, I can simply turn this on and copy one another if they already exist. I can simply use any SKUs that already exist to go to barcodes, use any barcodes that automatically exist to go over, or generate them from the start and match all the way down in order. So it depends on what you're starting from, but totally possible to have them both be generated and equal. Cool. And I think we'll do two more quick before we move on, because I know we've been doing questions for a bit. And again, we will do more questions at the end and everything. Um, Greg had asked, once we input the serial number, can customers see those serial numbers in the catalog that can be created for them? And that's actually a really good question. I personally don't know off the top of my head if they show in showroom. So they unfortunately don't show in showroom. So you're not going to see the individual serials of each item. I can actually preview on one of my customer showrooms here. I believe I should be able to see my frame bending machine. I can see this. I can see that it's in stock, but I can't actually see which serial numbers are in stock. Now, that being said, with my sales orders of what's actually going out to uh, customers for this one particular here, if I'm printing off like a pick list for my internal warehouse or even some of these packing slips and, and box contents, I believe these ones will have the individual serial numbers on them. Let me simply get the right one. And, and we can actually get those individual serials on them. I'm not sure if it's available here on our web app, but I believe it's possible through our desktop app and, and actually keep a list of each one of the serial numbers on them to, to make sure that you guys are able to communicate those to your customers, because obviously it's important for them to know which one that they got there. So that should be possible through through here, through this printing. And I let me shoot you in over in one of our emails afterwards, because I, I want to check with our team quickly if it can be done on the web app. We're moving so fast, sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything. Yeah, well, we can definitely look into that and, and let you know kind of exactly where. Um, and then, as I said, the last one before we kind of move on, um, can you stop serials being edited once entered? Um, and that one I can answer. Um, mm -hmm. We do have some options for allowing like restrictions on your team members. Um, unfortunately, if you do allow a, a team member to edit or uh, create serials and stuff like that, um, they will be able to edit them. There's no way to make it like once the, I guess like the sales order is created. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I could think is if you're talking on serial uh, on sales orders, you can protect like close a sales order so that it can't be edited if it's been fulfilled. Um, but in terms of the actual inventory itself, that there's no like specific just serial um, restriction. Mm -hmm. You can also, if this is one of your your warehouse team or people that are physically moving goods, we've got a mobile picking or a view in mobile picking and same thing for receiving here on my purchase orders. So I can limit someone to 
being able to access, work with the sale and purchase, work with the movement of goods, but not be able to make order level changes. So they're not able to edit what was originally ordered or edit the serials there, but they can still go through and pick them and, and operate as they should day to day, but without obviously some of the, the features there. And on top of that, this is sort of one of our, our wonderful things about Inflow is again, Everything trans is transparent with the movement history, with if someone were to come in and make a stock adjustment, you'd be able to see, and this would be someone who changed the serial, it would register as losing one serial, gaining another. You'd be able to see which team member did that when they did, if they transferred it, sold it, any of these, it's all tied to a user in inflow at all times. So I may not be able to stop them doing it, but I can certainly tell you who did it. That that's also where um, one of the things you, you don't want to share like logins and stuff like that if if possible because that way again you can track things like that so absolutely cool um, all right so yeah so uh, again go ahead put your questions in the <laughs> chat we will answer more uh, but I know Peter's got a little bit more here to show so we will do that and uh, again we'll have a Q and A for the rest at the end. I, I would be greatly amiss, uh, and one of my colleagues, Matt, would be very upset at me if we didn't have a chance to demonstrate some of the benefits of our smart scanner in this place, because scanning with serials and getting the speed of getting each one of those individual items out is so important, and, and the speed really will, will be a big game changer for how things move. So this is actually just a recording I took of my smart scanner here that you guys can see, and you guys can see the wonderful scanning light that it actually shows and the actual button on the side here. This is us receiving a purchase order. It's very similar interface, but you're obviously seeing a little bit of the differences there with the scanning buttons. This allows me to scan barcodes repeatedly. I can add more items to the order. Again, it's following the same workflow as you saw on my phone, but in this case, instead of my phone camera you're seeing in the top right, you're actually seeing our scanning button. And this is gonna go much faster and much smoother, unless obviously you're scanning a duplicate, then you would normally find on your phone. We built the mobile app for people to do as much as possible and, and to work as best as they can via their phones. But the smart scanner really is the main experience as it allows you to do everything significantly faster. It's drop proof, it's smash proof, it's waterproof. We've actually got a great also plug video for that. And, and I think you guys are gonna find that we find a lot more benefits to using something like this as you guys are getting all of your items in and and really taking advantage of the barcodes on them that may come from your individual suppliers. There are definitely some kind of like um, handy things with it too that you can get like accessories and stuff to um, add like a little handle to it so if, if you are mm. like moving on the go and stuff like that where you can then pull a trigger so it makes it look like a scanning gun kind of thing instead um, which can again make it a little easier for like one hand use and stuff like that um, so uh, again kind of just it, it's meant to help speed up everything as Peter was saying so mm -hmm. And and Brody, great question there about when the smart scanner is getting count sheets. That is, thank you for for bringing it up. This is one of the projects that that I know our team has been working on. I I think it's still in the design phase. It's still sort of in the early stages, but we want to expand on some of the different things that count sheets can do, and and not lock it as quickly as as you would normally right now in terms of an entire count sheet. So there's a little bit of a fun expansion projects that are coming. And I, I wanted to show off quickly the sales order function here, but I'll show you a bit of how you guys can do individual inventory counts and adjusting things from your phone without needing to necessarily go through one of these sales functions. So similar workflow to what we were talking about before. And, and this is our wonderful colleague, Carisha, setting the serial numbers at the initial stage of the order, simply scanning which one is going to be sent out even before she's picked it, even before she's actually gone and fulfilled the order. She can allocate one specifically to the customer. And it's actually, again, at this fulfillment stage, the second stage of the sales process, if you're scanning a, a serial that doesn't line up, that's not the same one as what we're looking for, Inflow is going to toss an error or you're going to go one for one. You're going to get everything out and pick the order, ship it out to the customer, and everyone's going to be a happy camper about it. Obviously, there's the mark paid section. And this is, again, 
we've got our QBO webinar and our QBO articles, zero articles that gets everything over. And we will give a recording of this session in a minute. We'll post everything on YouTube and we'll be sure to bug you guys about it. Yep. <laughs> so just a quick section here on how you guys can do some of that tracking with Inflow, how you guys can do some of the um, scanning of your individual items. Don't mind Bobby there, it's just my dog background. So you can tell it's my real phone. I can go into my product list here and simply go choose the item that I'm looking for. In this case, I'll choose that, that frame bending machine again and adjust the quantity on hand from here. I've got my different locations specified. I've got different sublocations of where things can be stored, uh, stored. And I can actually go in and add a new serial number here. And I brought a second book on my desk about inventory management for exactly this reason. So I can go in and, and scan that other serial and make these counts and adjust everything on the fly. And if I actually open up this section here, Inflow gives me the ability to see my individual serials and, and view everything that should be in that location there. So we're not quite at the stage where this UI is more friendly, everything's done at once, but the functionality of counting each individual serial, editing them, adding more, removing more, that's all still a part of Inflow. It's still something you guys can always do. And all those actions of adjustments, the team member, the time, all of those are recorded again through that movement history I've been showing off so much. So it's definitely something that's doable and making this an easier and more smooth process is very much at the top of our to-do list. And I appreciate the question. Fantastic. Um, so, so, sorry, I was gonna say Catherine did have one question saying when doing an inventory count, can we use the scan? Yes, absolutely. When you guys are doing that that count of goods, when you guys are actually going in and, and counting everything, if you've got a, a scanner, a wired or a wireless scanner, and I wanted to go in and do a full inventory count, I can go in and add this. Inflow is going to give me a system quantity of how much it thinks I have, and I can simply go in and add what I want here and scan five. I could scan you know, even 10 or 100 different serials and add them all to inventory. This is going to be something that's required for a wired or a Bluetooth scanner connected to your computer. And as soon as we get that functionality on the mobile app, we're going to be yelling to the high heavens would be the loudest email you ever heard in your life. <laughs> yeah, for sure. People will, will hear about that feature coming out because we've been waiting for a while for it. And we're going to be very excited at the time. So we're going to be on, we're going to be having a good week. So yeah, obviously we've been answering a number of different questions, but I wanted to give you guys a chance and, and the floor for any questions that might be inflow related, even if they don't have to do with serial numbers, we're here to answer everything at all. And, and then Phil is going to lead us through our, our mystery giveaway. Yep. And uh, I think we, we have the, the names of everybody that's, that's here. So um, we will be able to do that whenever we want to mm -hmm. um and actually i guess i forgot to end the poll before but it looks like most people answered it which is cool so um we, we ended up with 54 percent of people do have serial numbers wow um, 55 now look at that go oh yeah there we go uh 18 percent no but they'd like to add them and 20 about 26 percent said no they don't have them so that's that's really cool to know thank you everyone for answering that yeah thanks a lot and, and just a quick question from Bridget there. She's mentioning that they're fairly new to Inflow and they haven't had the time to figure it out just yet. We do have a wonderful onboarding team that's built to do exactly this. And you guys can reach us at bookonboarding at inflowinventory.com. We've got everything actually within the app as well. I'll make sure to, to send out an email to you as well. Please come and reach out to us, support at inflowinventory.com. We've got hours of training built into all of our plans and Everyone here is in-house. They're all wonderful and everyone knows the program inside and out. So you're going to get the best help from the best people and we'll get you set up as best we can. And from there, we have unlimited support. So we actually have the ability to go and do live chats, troubleshoot things as they come up. And we, we promise we won't leave you hanging when things get, things get a bit patchy at tax season. Exactly. Um, I see somebody under the name Compression Equipment had also said we use Inflow Ooh. Inventory, but QuickBooks for accounting side, and they know that they're able to connect to each other, but how exactly do they connect and how does it work? Um, I, I don't know if you'd like me to go or, or if you want to go. Hey, I, take I, it away. 
sure. Um, so yeah, basically, our, we, we do have a QuickBooks integration um, that you can connect with any of your Inflow Cloud um, accounts. Uh, essentially, what it will do, you kind of have a lot of different options in there that you can configure. So you can choose uh, if you want it to only send like your sales orders to QuickBooks uh, and create journal entries that way, or if you want it to also then track your, your purchase orders as well. Um, but essentially, what it is doing is pushing the information from inflow to QuickBooks, uh, which can also include like payment information from those orders and stuff like that as well. Um, it is very configurable. I believe we actually do have a webinar on it as well. That that might be a good place to look. Otherwise, we do have uh, an article that I believe Nuria just uh, linked there as well that goes through kind of all the different setup. Uh, as well as kind of the different options and everything and how it works. But uh, it's a quick way to make it uh, keep Inflow and uh, QuickBooks in sync between the, the two different systems mm -hmm. kind of thing. And for our Baker's Dozen shameless plug, we have a wonderful QBO webinar that goes over more of the details about how it syncs, when it syncs, and some of the different specifics there. Everything is accessible for these webinars on our YouTube channel, Inflow Inventory, and there's a number of different sections there. There's some shorter videos for feature introductions and then some deep dives like this one where you guys can get to know some of the features really in, in detail and, and get as much info as you can to use it as best you can. So um, Lurie, Nuria also just uh, pasted the uh, webinar page link oh, in the chat. You, so, so if anyone needs that as well too you can definitely uh, go in there um jeff i see is asking do you have any demo app for a candidate can play with before they make a decision absolutely um, yeah, th this is actually something that that we've just recently done too. That's really cool. That uh, if you sign up for a trial, um, we do actually kind of pre-populate it with uh, like a test database that has some uh, stuff. <coughs> excuse me, some stuff in there that you can play around with, so like sales orders, products, everything like that. Um, which you can, as soon as you're on there, you can log into our mobile app right away. So you can load that on uh, Android or iOS devices. So you can definitely try it out in both places. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you're ready to kind of start putting your own information. In, there's a button that you can just hit to, to say um, kind of let me start over and, and it'll clear it out so that you can put all your company's information in exactly. Absolutely. It's built to play with so you can, can mess around and get, get your feet wet without starting on any of the serious work there. And exactly. I, I do want to make sure that I, that I get this right for Carlos and I'll see if I can flex my, my Spanish muscles because it's been a while. <laughs> si nosotros tenemos un version en espanol uh you guys should be able to see my desktop app here yep. on the main menu on the left side options under personal settings so this is changeable per user i can actually go in and swap the display language and this will change the display language for the whole desktop app and it does most of the most common fields in the web and mobile so some of the the most top tier ones but we're just shy of a full translation there Awesome. I have no idea if you said it correctly, but it sounded good. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I see a couple of people asking for the webinar link again. So Nuria just put it again. So hopefully that uh, that works. Um, and I think that was everyone's questions that I can see. I mean, the giveaway is pretty sweet, but we'll give you guys a second for going once. Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? Okay. I think that's everything in terms of the questions there. Cool. Um, um, but yeah, um, I, I think unless anyone else had any other questions um, that we, we should be all set. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in and, and take a couple of days. We'll do a bit of editing and, and get some of the captions done. We'll make sure to post this on our YouTube channel. So come and check out this along with all of our other webinars. If you guys need anything at all, support at inflowinventory.com. The whole tier is the whole team is here to help you guys out. So don't be a stranger and and just reach out to us and well, we'll make it all better. We'll try at least, yes. We can't promise everything, but but yes, most nah. things we can we can definitely help with. Really nice to meet everyone. Thanks a lot for coming in today to super serious serials. Yep. And uh I'm sure we will talk to you all soon. Talk Thanks to you again. soon. Bye everybody. <laughs>